Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. And today what I want to do is actually talk about my reconfiguration file for 2025 that I have available. So this goes over pretty much all the videos that I've probably released on this channel for any kind of updates that I've actually done. So you get to see all the things that I've actually added to my Reaper and you can actually add it to yours as well. I have it available on my website at xel. OHH.com. So first let's go over what's actually in there. All right, so here we are in Reaper and the theme that I'm actually using here is Reaper tips. When you open up the reconfiguration file, it'll look exactly how this one looks right now. You'll also have your options for your uh, effects that are right here. Uh, it will be a different compressor. It will be a different reverb that'll work with Reaper. It'll also be a different uh, delay and a different chorus all set up with Reaper stock plugins because uh, I'm not sure if anybody has these that are currently here. I also uh, included a drop down here, this little button here on the transport. If you click on it, it'll actually add a new track. The one inside of the configuration manager is a free synth VST. It's a JS plugin that you can actually use inside of Reaper. So. It'll be uh, some sounds in there that you can use automatically just like this. And you can change this whenever you want to, to a different sound, right? So usually the path begins with Reaper. So uh, I've also done a whole bunch of different videos of uh, different things. And the first one I talked about, I should talk about would be the Reaper seven video. So if you go to Reaper seven, uh, that video uh, kind of going over some of the things that's new inside of Reaper 7. Uh, this Rhea pack is for Reaper 7, seeing that it isn't for 2025. So Reaper 7 is the one you would need in order to actually get this reconfiguration file to work with your Reaper, right? So just get the latest version. There's nothing really that much different from the 7 to right now. Uh, so it'll definitely work for you that way, right? The first thing that you always need to learn in Reaper is how to do SWS and Rhea pack inside of Reaper. And they made it a lot easier. So now all you have to do is download the Rhea pack and you'll also get the SWS. So basically you're just gonna drag that DDL file of the Rhea pack into your users folder inside of Reaper and then you'll be able to actually use that. The next video I had was a fix the zoom and, uh, and scroll inside of Reaper so that your mouse wheel works like a lot of other DAWs where if you hold down alt inside of the piano roll or inside of your track view, it'll actually zoom or yeah, zoom in and out or scroll, I should say, left to right uh, that way. So the, 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 screen, the screen will zoom left to right. I guess that's how you would say it. Uh, instead of it going like up and down like it was doing before when you first get Reaper. Uh, so that is actually in this Rhea pack as well. Uh, of course, there are themes and the theme I'm using right now is Reaper tips. So when you open up, you'll see this same Reaper tips theme inside of yours, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you ask me, I have my performance view right over here on this right hand side as well. Uh, my mixers down here and I also have my browser on the left hand side with the sampler kind of down here and a couple other effects and things down here that I've actually used uh, throughout my time here at Reaper, <laughs> basically. I have a lot of MPL scripts, so some, some really good ones. So the RS5K manager is one of the really good ones that is actually out there. So if you hit on like this little drum right down here, at the bottom of the mixer, it'll pull up. This is the RS. 5k manager he's actually changed a little bit of the layout so if you want to actually bring it down you can bring it into your uh, docking station put it in the middle and boom you have it now in your docking station so really easy simple to kind of use um, i do have a video showing you i knew i need to update the video because he's added a couple of things in here that are really really cool i need to show you guys exactly what that is so i have a couple of things down here in this toolbar that are pretty cool so this first one down here with the little uh piano if you click on that, that'll bring up the MX tuner. And I also have a video on how the MX tuner works. So if you do wanna check that out, there's a video for that. So if you click it again, it'll go away. If you have this one here, the one next with the squiggly line is the MK slicer. I have a video on the MK slicer as well. So if you do wanna learn how to use the MK slicer, I have a video on that as well. The only one I don't have a video on is this next one. This one is an effects one. 
All right, and this is the MK Shaper and Stutter. I haven't actually done a video on this, but it basically gives you an option to do like stutter effects on your tracks and uh, manipulates it that way. Uh, I do need to do a, do a video on it, but I haven't done it yet, but it is available inside of this reconfiguration file as well. All right, and this next one is for um, RS 5K Manager. So let's bring one up. All right, so I have a 808 here. So what this does is this allows you to go through the sounds instead of it bringing, bringing it down here inside of the editor, you can actually see it inside the RS5K uh, being changed as well. So all the changes you can see are just done inside there. Uh, if this is not on and you click the next thing, it'll go down here to the bottom. So that's what uh, that actually does. I thought that was pretty cool. So the next one over is, it should be a reverse for this RS5K. All right, so when you hit on this, it should reverse the sample. As you can see, it reverses that sample inside of the RS5K. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I get to have it down here. If it doesn't work, just redo it. Uh, I, I have had a time where it kind of stopped working. So you just go into edit here and you click on the reverse this script and you right click, right? And you hit change action and just look for the same exact action. It's just like the script got updated and it didn't go through. So just do that and you'll be able to apply and you should be able to do it, right? Performance. So this is my performance over here. So this button is the performance. So if I click it, it'll take it away. I wanna add it back, add it back, right? And this button here is to clear the retroactive. So let's say we did something in this Keyzone Classic. Let's add a piano. So I've had several ways to actually add a MIDI. So you can double click in here and it'll add a MIDI, right? You can hit H on your keyboard and that'll create a MIDI. And I have also an insert MIDI up here as well. So many ways I've had to set up uh, adding your MIDI in here. I think that was a really good thing for me because it just worked better. And if you hit R on your keyboard, it'll give you an option to record. I don't, I took away the control in R that it had before. So I just hit R on my keyboard and it'll actually start recording. So. All right, so we have a piano in here, but we didn't want to do that, right? So I'm going to hit escape to get off the loop. I'm going to delete this MIDI, right? And I'm going to hit on clear anything that's being played. So let's play something, right? And, and see if it records. So I'm going to go and play something. And let's say we like that, but we forgot to record. Now all you have to do is hit insert this next one, insert, and it'll insert the keys that you just played. So I have it right down here at the bottom so you can clear the retro and then you can actually insert it. Um, so I made it a lot easier for me if I was coming up with ideas and I'm just playing stuff, I can kind of just pull all the MIDI that I've done. And this one is a BRSO. Um, it is included in here and it does act a little wonky. So, um, I do have a BRSO video as well to show you how to actually use the BRSO inside of Reaper. So that is another one that we can add on the list. And yeah, and most of the, the other things that I've added in here are inside the piano roll. So if I'm double click, here is the piano roll itself. All right. So we have the pianos in here. Um, if you wanted to do, uh, let's say we want to do some chops on this section here, right? I'm highlight all of them and I'm gonna hold down control and shift. And you see this little paintbrush that comes up. Now I can chop them by using my mouse wheel. by holding down control shift in the mouse wheel. I also have a video showing you how to actually do this as well. Right, right. And, um, and as you can see up here, there's a couple of different things. Um, 
I've added this option to uh, flip all the tracks really easy. So I can just flip all of them uh, if I have them highlighted. So I hit on this and it'll flip or reverse the order. Um, pretty cool. If you want to split the notes by the grid, whatever the grid is set to, it'll split. So if I hit split notes, it'll split by the grid. As you can see, all of them are split. And this is an option to do uh, some other MIDI. Uh, this gives you an option to do random MIDIs. So uh, you can do like the step sequencer and kind of add your own little flavor in here if you want to. So this is another way to create a sound from scratch uh, if you wanted to. Uh, and this is for our arpeggiating. So if I wanted to, I can click on this and I have a video on this as well, showing you the scripts for that. And let's say we wanted to do an ARP, as you can see it's doing its own ARP thing and setting that up down here. Really, really simple, really easy to kind of do. And I have a video showing you guys how to actually use that as well. And this is for uh, velocity to randomize the velocity. It'll bring up your, this randomizer so I can randomize the velocity. As you can see, the velocity is moving. Yeah, so I have a video on that as well. And then down here, I have this, um, the Rhea Inspiration. So you can actually make your chords really easy inside of Reaper. So if you wanted to just start something, uh, it's right down here, right? And all this is included inside of my Reaper configuration file for 2025. So if you do want to get it, like I said, it's available at xeloh.com. Hope to see you there. I'm going to be doing a couple more videos on Reaper and showing you a couple other things that I've added in here. Um, I haven't even showed you like the other things like this right here is like a step sequencer. So if I click on this, this will open up the like FL studio type of sequencer It's called uh, M sequencer or mix sequencer. I did a video showing you that this is not FL studio. So this is where this actually comes from. Um, really, really cool option to have inside of Reaper uh, if you want to have a step sequencer. But the MPL 5K Manager actually has a step sequencer in there as well that I need to show you guys. So I'm going to have some videos showing these two step sequencers uh, very soon. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you are liking and subscribing and subscribe to the channel so you can see all these new videos that's coming out. I got a lot of things lined up for you guys. But yeah, with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. I want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Until the next time, peace. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.